on Beatmaker, the Hitmaker, the Hitmaker, the Hitmaker. It's about that time I grabbed the. We're gonna do a couple. Um, it's the first annual one. Um, I was born and raised in DC. Um, first, first street I would live on was Q Street, right? Off of a Good Hope Road. And that's where my father left the home. Um, when I was young, I wanna say he's about five. Cause I remember when he did leave. Um, Cause you know, now when you're younger, you don't really remember, but I remember vaguely like him leaving. And um, my mom really heard about that. So because he was the breadwinner, there was no money, right? So with that, with no money and him leaving, we had to leave. I will never forget that day. It was rainy outside and in an alley of off of Good Hope Road and Q Street. It's an alley and it breaks up into different areas, right? I remember going outside, getting in the car. We had like a little hoopty back then. Got in the car. And I saw a mouse in the grass. It was a dirty mouse, like in the rain. Like somebody dropped the baby and just left it there, right? I seen the jump leaving. I was like, Mom, look at that mouse. I would never forget this, bro. And that's, it stuck with me. And she grabbed the mouse. She took that mouse home, washed it, and she kept that mouse. But it was a remembrance of that day my father left, right? When he left, look at that, yeah, you funny. What'd you say, yeah, Mom? <laughs> nah, I don't know live mouse, man. You funny. I ain't taking over uh, live mouse home and washing it. He funny as I don't know. Y'all thought it was a live mouse? Uh, yeah. We ain't talking about Mickey Mouse. We ain't talking about Mickey Mouse in here, y'all. We ain't talking about Mickey Mouse. <laughs> and, and look, and believe it or not, y'all doing exactly what I expect y'all to do. I want y'all to be transparent in this conference. Questions, answers, all that, just be free. Laugh, all of that. I'm transparent. Um, but we got the mouse home, washed it, and that was the remembrance of that day that my father left. Um, and with that, here's the thing though. And, and y'all gonna feel this right here. Here's the thing. When I got older and I became a father, I became a father, right? Because we didn't have the fathers in the hood, right? When I got older and I got my kids, I thought about it. I said, how can I just up and leave my wife and my kids? You cannot be in your right mind, bro. If you up and leave your children and your spouse, there's no way possible. So of course I had to, I had to instantly ask God to help me forgive my father again. Cause I still talk to this dude and I feel like I'm the father in the family or the grandfather and he's the teenager. You know what I mean? That's because what happened was I found God. I found God. Um, when I ran with the Simple City uh, crew at the time, uh, we was on our way to shoot a pistol up at Davis, Davis School. Y'all know where Davis at, right? Oh, I know, I know where I know at. <laughs> Davis School. DH yeah, Bob, I don't know. All right. So Davis is like right next to Simple City. So when you walk out Simple City, you walk like a block down, Davis is right there, all right? We was on our way to shoot a pistol. I kid y'all not. God decided to talk to me. And I was ticked off he started to talk to me at that moment. Because you in that moment with your homies, you about to shoot a pistol. You know what I mean? Why all of a sudden now, right? He talked to me. I said, I stopped in the middle of the block. I said, okay. You got my attention. When I get home, I want you to give me everything that I need as to why um, I went through so much stuff and I need you to give me an answer. So I got home, and y'all know how it is. You flip a Bible open, it fell to a scripture. That's what that scripture was, y'all. Yeah. The scripture that says, when your mother and father forsake you, he'll take you up, right? Then he gave me another scripture. He said, he's a father to the fatherless, right? So that moment, we made a pact. We said, from, from, from this time on, you're going to be my father, I'm your son. Of course, people don't know the weight of that. 
right? You don't know the weight of that. You make a pact with God. He keeps his promises. You might not keep, you might not necessarily keep yours, right? Yeah, Bone Thugs and Harmony playing at the time. I'm still listening to them. You know what I'm saying? I'm still listening to a little Scarface, you know what I'm saying? So I'm still kind of wavering, but I made that pack with him at that time, man. And but ever since then, he's been a father, man. And he told me how to be a father. Amen. So with all these testimonies of struggling in DC without a father, right? And then me becoming a father of some beautiful son, right? And a beautiful daughter. And they've been married for 25 years, right? Um, yeah. Um, so with Jesus visiting me the way he did, I, I'm I'm 100% all Jesus. I know it's a loud, whole lot of religions in the world, but this God visited me on the block. This God visited me on the block. I have no college education, none of that, but he visited me and changed my whole life, bro. He put the money in my pocket, everything, man. Like my family is good, man, from this God that visited me as a father. What more, what more father you want in the world other than the father of the universe, bro? Yeah, that's right, that's so welcome to this conference. That's what this conference is about. The testimonies of brothers who had no father, who found God. How did you find God in the streets like y'all did, man? And they want to hear your testimony and your music. Next up, you want to hear from God's arrow, Too Deep for Christ, and Ty. All right? Let's get it. Jesus to save us. 
That's love and it'll never be finished. He hung on the cross and said these words, it's finished. The battle was won, Jesus said to win it. And hell is the place for those that come up against the king. God over everything, I see it in the vision. God got me out of hell, I thought that I was vision. I was struggling from day to day, but now I'm a blessing. Now I still give God the glory even when I'm stressing. God over everything, I see it in the vision. God got me out of hell, I thought that I was vision. I was struggling from day to day, but now my life's a blessing. Now I still give God the glory even when I'm stressing. I want to share a little, uh, little testimony with y'all about, you know about us. And uh, I know for me, you know, I grew up in Southeast D.C. And uh, it was rough. I stayed over there in, uh, you know, 6th Street, Trent Park. It was rough, you know. I was running around with them, you know, you know how it is. It's pretty rough. But uh, my mother tried to move me to Merlin to get me away from that lifestyle. Right. But little did she know, it's the same, the same <laughs> Merlin where you go. The same thing. <laughs> so we moved to PG County. Right, right. That's ABC. Yeah, I mean, that's all it is. It's the same thing, same people. They even look the same. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, so. Uh, I started, you know, running the streets, started to... Uh, Start to rob, you know, steal whatever I can to get some money, and uh, ended up going to prison. And I started robbing banks. You know, living. I mean, I might not look like a bank robber. I might look like doing type of things, but I did. You know, and, and God <coughs> saved me. Come on, bro. God saved me, man. And if God can save me, He can save anybody, man. Hallelujah. Uh, that's the yeah. the grace of God, man. Everything happens for a reason. Yeah. You know, I know a lot of people say prison is a bad thing, you know, but. I made it a good thing. You know, I, I love that God sat me down. I was able to hear from him and talk to him. And, and I met this brother. Mm -hmm. I met this brother. And when I met him, mm -hmm. you know, he was working on music in the day room, working on music, doing gospel rap. And I never heard this form of rap before. Right. Because at the time, I was rapping for the streets. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was talking about trapping is a must. Yeah. And that's how I used to live my life. Yeah. You know, I didn't care what you was talking about, what was going on. I ain't had no money in my pocket that you had in your pocket coming to get that. Let me get that. Right. So you know, that's how I was living my life. Right. And um, when I met this brother, he introduced me to a, 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 a new way of living, a new way of thinking, yeah. a new way to make music, make music for God. I didn't right. know you could do that. Yeah. So right. now I take that same energy, that same trap, you know, energy, but I turn into God and doing, you know, lift up his kingdom and advance his glory, man, and try to help others out that's yeah. out there in these streets, man, because a lot of times they ain't really trying to hear from the church people, man. Yeah. Right. They trying to hear people, man, who actually been out there, yeah, you know, and, and, and went through it. Because I know I ain't trying to hear from you if you ain't been through it. Because, like, if you ain't got no money, you see, I ain't trying to hear nothing you talking about. Yeah. You know, because you can't tell me nothing you ain't experiencing. Yeah. So, like, that's how, and then, uh, Hey, like the two people right. So when I met him on the music, man, uh, he showed me how to, you know, how to write music for God. He showed me how to, you know, do things the right way. And um, the Lord would bless me with songs, you know, because we've been faithful to him. We was praying every day. Oh, come on, we we locked up. We in prison, you know. We locked up. We in the day room praying, you know, have a Bible study, working on music. You know, we even had people that's. You know, Moses walking them to us, asking us to pray for them. Right. You know, we don't know, man. You know, you know, we serve Jesus. Right, right. They're like, man, we see y'all always happy, always smiling, man. We want some of that too. Wow. So I'm like, man, yeah. 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 we let them hear our music, man. Let them vibe on with us. And you know, we don't, we don't discriminate. We don't, you know, you want to yeah. love God, we are gonna share it to you because He tells us in His Word. That's it. Yeah. You know, freely give because we freely receive. Right. Yeah. You know, so we try to share His love wherever we go. Yeah. We have a high goal now. That's how we do it. Yeah. So I just want to say a little bit because, um, so, man, I give honor to, and glory to God because, man, this brother saw me when I was doing the right thing. <laughs> when they do that, right? People usually see you when you're doing the wrong thing, right? So for him to see me in, in my moment where I had finally surrendered to God was powerful. When I allowed God to begin to really father me, you know, um, I was the prodigal son in real life. I had my pops. And I turned around and ran away from the situation. And, and like, he had to work all the time, you know? So I, I looked at it like, bro, you abandoning me. Yeah. 
I didn't know until I was just talking to Pastor Curtis. I, I didn't know until later, like he did that because he loved us so much. Wow, right? wow. He sacrificed his time so we always have a place to stay. Mm -hmm. So we had vehicles. Exactly. So we had food in our mouth and yeah. stuff like that. I looked at it like you, he was like betraying me, like he was running away from his responsibility. Right. And really he was taking care of his responsibility. Exactly. Um, so I didn't really listen to what he said. I ended up in prison because I went the opposite of what he said. I became rebellious. And, and I rebelled against my, my pop, my, yeah. my earthly father. And um, what, what I learned later on is some of those things that he taught me would bring off in my ear. Yeah, yeah. While I'm just sitting in jail, hey, you shouldn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shouldn't do that. Right on, right on. And I'm just like, man, yeah. I, mean, I wish I would listen. Yeah. But then I would get back out there and do the same thing. Yeah. And, and then I still wouldn't listen. And like a lot of stuff that he taught me, like I miss him now, he's gone. He went to be with the Lord in 2012 while I was in prison. And um, but so many of the things that he told me, I now use that stuff in my life. So I'm blown, I'm like, that I didn't get to be able to use it while he was here. Yeah. But I was on the phone with him um, and he said this to me while I was in prison. He said, um, I'm proud of you, son. I started crying immediately. I'm like, how could you be proud of me? He said, I, I said, because I'm in prison right now. I, I said, man, I don't even know if I'll make it home while you still with us. Yeah. And he said, um, he said, it's, it's not what you've done. He said, but I can hear it in your voice. Mm -hmm. I can hear it in what you're talking about that you've changed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I just began to cry and, and, and see what he was talking about. Because that was powerful. Like, man, he saw it in, 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 in what God was putting in me. Yeah. Father, Father God began to become my father. My dad didn't even leave me yet, and God has always been there to be my father. Wow. But I haven't been listening to him, right? So then when I got in tune, tuned in, this brother happened to see me when I was tuned in. Yeah. And I said, Lord, I'm ready for you to be my father. Yeah. And then I gained a brother. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because iron sharpens iron, but it's that Proverbs 27, 17. Yeah. So it's like, man, we all sharpen. What I say in that day, make your boy a razor. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what it's all about is being able to, to sharpen one another. Us brothers, brothers and sisters under our father yeah. in heaven. And as we listen to him, we, we read his word and we build that relationship. That's when we actually become the children of God. Yeah. You know, we allow him to lead our lives and, and guide us to, to join others to the family of God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So to you for Christ, man, is just, it's just something that he did for us. And it's built this bond together, you know. Um, yeah. So, so now we're just strong brothers in Christ. And like most of the people thought, we would like come back home from prison and just do our own thing. Yeah, it's very tempting to do that, yeah. but at the same, reflect and um, so one of our um, our theme is no father to the father. Yeah, um, I grew up. Um, in a single family home. Um, at the time, my father was on Merck Most Wanted. Um, he was a real bank robber, you know what I'm saying? So he took you back with that one. So he, uh, yeah. So that was, uh, that was going on. And um, I recently, um, on 420, uh, watched him pass. And I know a hospital. Um, I buried them on June 3rd. Um, I'm standing here um, today just to definitely signify that God he is good yeah. and he's able to keep you even in the midst. Yeah. Um, I made sure that today that I would be here and as I talked just briefly about my story, like I said, as that time when I was born and growing up, he was always on America most well, he wanted like two times. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> so he, as I look back at his life and as I'm looking back now as I'm thinking, as I'm talking to y'all, and I don't think that I'm not gay. I like that I like eye contact, but I'm gay. Yeah. Um but I can remember um even throughout my older siblings as well. He was the type, by the time, and I can say this girl right now, but at the time I feel like during that duration of his life, 
um, by the time it got to me, it was like, I, I, I want to make a change, right? Yeah. Yet I, I still caught the end, um, uh, uh, you know, the wrong end of the stick at the same time because there still was a life, a lifestyle that was going on. Mm -hmm. So I had a praying mother, I had a single mother who made sure and ensured that God was instilled in me at a very, very young age. I, I received the Holy Ghost at a very, very young age. Um, my father was in and out, and he, he was in prison, of course. He, he, he's a Lord gladiator. Um, <laughs> you know, if you know what that means. Uh, you know, so I, at the time, I, I to keep me at bay, and to keep us safe, and to keep us away from a lot of things. I, I was shared from a lot of those moments in those <laughs> early times, even understanding. So I, I conditioned myself to only know that I would see him every three months, every six months, wow. like that. I would condition my mind because I, um, I didn't know why he was moving the way he was moving. But I, I I grew to understand later down the line of why it would, it seemed so distant but yet so close at the same time. We had our moments, of course. We going up to Georgetown, and going up there buy buy a suit, you know what I'm saying? Buying me some fresh Jordans and stuff like that. We had we had moments and um, that shaped me. Uh, so it was a part of the time where, as though you know, as as young men, we growing up and. And now I'm not probably like in my teenage, well, getting ready to get to my teenagers. My uh, my father was the first person to take me to my first go go. Um, as you think about it, so um, I went to go see back at the avenue. Um, I had to be nothing but twelve, you know what I'm saying, or eleven, something like that at the avenue. Because you know who we know, you know we know people, know people. Why am I? I'm the youngest one in here. Why I'm sitting up here, but. Stuff like that, it impacted, it grew on me. Yeah. So when you think about the little moments that I didn't have, but the moments that I did have were the most impactful moments of my life. Yeah. Uh, I knew how to sh sh shoot a gun because of my father. Uh, my father taught me how to defend myself. My father taught me what loyalty truly meant um, in brotherhood for that, especially in our brothers of arms. You know, you get it, you get it. So, uh, for me, as a young man growing up and being in the streets, and uh, I'm from the Trinidad area, and so from us having to just go through war with various neighborhoods all the time, and people in schools and go gos and all of that, I remember uh, one of the times I got shot. Um, my father again turned turned turn to that person. Um, and for me, it was crazy because this now begins one of my most fond moments of my teenage years of having a moment with, a, with my father who, who has not always been in the moments that I needed him to be. Wasn't there for no basketball games. Wasn't there a lot of times when things were going wrong at home, when mama had to cook clean, come on, work late, I got to figure it out, you know what I'm saying, how I'm going to eat or, or whatever the case may be during the time watching myself, you know what I'm saying, that opens the door. And so when we have these statistics, as pastor shows that now you have put your child in a place where as though now they have to find out who they are because it's not spoken to who they are on the level of a man as a woman can still you know, speak to that man's heart and that their heart, them heartstrings, but yet the foundation of a man in a man's life is everything. And so here we have that broken part, which though I am, I am now like, okay, what am I doing? How am I doing it? And so because he's away, um, I'm, I'm clinging to, um, uh, you know, all, all the, a lot of the older cats were clinging on to me because I could play drums real good. And so I, I was above my age and, and the skill. So, you know, they kept pulling me and pulling me. And they was in the streets, but, that, you know, go-go was everybody's thing. You know, it's our thing. Sure. It, it, kept, it, it kept us in a way of bonding and 
being together and playing and having a good old time. Uh, and so that began it, but trouble still arise. And so here I am, you know, kicking it with everybody that's at that time, they, they in their twenties. Right. I'm what, 13, 14, you know, I'm right. good, good at drums, but now I'm a part of what they got going on. You know what I'm saying? So I'm having to do what I do to do, you know, I'll come home, you know, it's, it, it, with that type of mindset. Um, but it was a point in time, my, my father was always in law. And so uh, down law in Aquaquan and a lot of things everybody know my father uh, is being a lawman, um, a lawman with the knife. That's what they used to call him. And so um, he helped so many people get licenses back. Yeah. So many people, uh, that their heart just to, to, to help. Um, whenever he showed up, he showed up with a gift. The story of his life, I mean, many people came to and sat there in the church and, and just saw how whenever he came, he always came with something. He left the imprint of his life with somebody by what always sometimes would be the back of his trunk. Yeah. Wow. It, it could be your friend. Right. You you know, he pull up on you with your friend right there, so you be like, oh, hold on, I got something for him too. Hold on, hold on. He like, what do you say? You know, uh, it was a thoughtful dude. And so I got in some trouble. Um, was facing 15 in life. And my father was my lawyer. Um, and it was crazy. My father, so my father never completed doing his lawyer stuff or whatever, but he worked with the lawyers doing private investigation. Thing where we go outlaw, in law or whatever, so, so he felt as though, you know, that that was always his niche um, throughout those times before me. And so I counted the honor that when I, I was in my trouble um, of catching serious cases and things of that nature, it was him that kind of still uh, coddled, um, empowered, uh, directed me in that moment of, of that I needed to hear from a father. Yeah. Um, this something you've been through. You, you, you've been through going through DC jail, going through CTF, going to the feds, all this stuff. So each step of the way, I'm glad that I, I had his voice in my head. The same thing, that's what we gotta always mention with hearing the voice of God, because he'll lead you into all truth. And so with that, that same what happened in the natural, the same thing in the spirit. And so as I'm reflecting, though, in the natural, I see that each and every step of the moment, I don't know how he did it. And so, so thank you for allowing me to stand in for my pastor. Um, man, I really love this. I get the opportunity, like like uh, Bob and, 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 and Ralph mentioned, I get the opportunity to do life with them. Of course, I'm their pastor. Of course, I'm their manager. But... I get to, you hear their stories, man. I get to go out with them and just hear them, see them impact the community. And what I love about it, they love the Lord more than anything. So I don't take this opportunity for granted. Again, I want to uh, honor Pastor DK and his lovely wife for allowing me to be here, Pastor Kirby, for being here. But real quick, I'm from D.C. too. I'm from Northwest. They call us the pretty boys of, of D.C. Amen? Yeah. There's always this thing about, about the Northwest boys, but I'm from Northwest. Um, I'm going to try to do this real quickly in, in three parts. The first thing, I love the, that it says you, you, you overcome by the blood of the lamb and, and your testimony. But the part, the, the part that I like, it says you, you, you did not love it so much. Let me, let me say this right because I don't want to screw it up. I want to say this right. But this is the part of the, t of the scripture that I love so much because it refocuses you like my brother Rao was saying back on the Lord Jesus and what he's done for you. Amen. So the last part of that is this. Where is it? It says, they did not love their, their lives to death, right? Because mm. the whole world teaches you how to love your life. Because we can get up here and tell our stories and tell how great it is and, and what we've been through and how bad it was and all these different things. But I don't love it that much that I died in it because your, your story is a transformation story is what I'm getting at, right? Mm -hmm. So at the end of every story, you should be saying how God showed up and what he did in your life and how that is even more greater than the story that you're about to tell. Because right. I'm about to tell a story that's overlooked. I like being here today because I got a nuance. I wasn't a drug dealer, but I did drugs, right? I, was, I, I didn't sell it, but I went to go get it. That's a part of my story. So I'm back up a little bit. So this is from the 
from the Father to the Father. to the fatherless God. And we thank you, we praise you, Jesus, and we pray, amen. 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 All right, amen. man. So, Father's testimonies, right? We can, you know, everybody that sold a million bricks, positive. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, today, it, it's kind of different for you, right? Uh, I share testimony a lot of people share, you know what I mean? I have my father in the house, right? Um, but early on, I, I heard so many horror stories about my father, right? How, you know, he would pass my mother in the snow when she was pregnant with me with a, you know, cough of his homies and all of that. Wow. Uh, smoking tree, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, it was stories of him running women be my mom, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, you know how it goes. You know, it, it, it's unfortunately it's the devil, it's the regular, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I grew up resenting my father. You know what I'm saying? I grew up like purposing, like for real, real life, like I was gonna kill him. You know, um, he tried to be my mother. You know what I'm saying? But he ain't make a career out of it. You know what I'm saying? My mother, she from Stanton Road, she wasn't a feisty DC on mm -hmm. it, right? <laughs> and so uh, she ended up cutting him or stabbing him, right? Wow. So like you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna share first I wanna give an honor to God first and foremost, man, Pastor Kurt, Lady Christy, uh, you know, Pastor Zoe, you know what I mean? That's my son over there in the corner, Pan. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, so it was you know, like it was just the, the, the generational curse, you know what I'm saying? You know, uh, uh you know, the men in my family run a woman, beating their woman, you know what I'm saying? Uh and so I had purpose, like I said, I, I had purpose in my heart to real life kill my father, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I was one of the ones that did stuff, man, where you probably wouldn't figure it would come from me. So if you was gonna try me, I was gonna overdo it, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I had made a pact within myself, I'm announced to me that, you know, nobody was playing with me. Um, and I took every measure um, to, to fulfill that, you know what I mean? Because the way I felt, if I couldn't look at myself in the mirror and respect myself, yeah, yeah. I ain't fit to live, yo. So I was like, <laughs> I'm going all out, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but like, that's not even what I really want to talk about today. Like, I really want to talk about just, man, how, how God is the father to the fathers, man, to know him. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, like we can, he's brought us all from a, from a long way, right? Uh, we have testimony, and don't be wrong, you overcome by the, by the word of testimony in the blood of the Lamb, right? But like, man, all of it is nothing more if you don't know it, yeah. right? So I used to pride myself, like I said, you know what I mean? God, I want to know you. God, I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to know you, right? But uh, but I, I want to be known by him, man. You know what I'm saying? Because like the Bible says, in the last days, they going to they gonna cry to him, Lord, Lord. And he gonna say, the part from you work of iniquity, I knew you not. Mm -hmm. And they did all these works like Bob was saying. Mm -hmm. right, they was right, casting right. out demons, they right. was attending conferences. Mm -hmm. And in the end, they flopped. Okay. And so the father, you know what I mean, shed his blood that we might know him. Mm -hmm. That's why he died to remove the chasm between us and him, mm -hmm. to know him. Mm -hmm. And so God, man, you know what I mean, um, he stopped. That, that curse on my life, you know what I mean? Uh, the curse where, you know, my son is growing, growing up in the home, seeing me respect his mom, seeing me honor her in a home of prayer, you know? Uh, I'm, I'm thankful because my son, he went over through school and he had one fight. I fought every single year, <laughs> every year. I, 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 I ain't had no breaks. 
<laughs> I'm talking about every year all through the year. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think the Lord, man, probably like, I think I was I was I was rock and rolling with this dude, man, and it was temporary here, and I think 11, 12, he just let me rest. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about from Kenny God going up. So I'm, I'm like, man, thank God. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? How y'all feeling? Good, good, good. Listen, I ain't gonna be before you long. I ain't gonna be before you long. Y'all know this preacher say we'll be up here for about an hour or so. <laughs> but now, real talk, I'm not gonna be before you long. Too much good stuff has already been said. So, first of all, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everybody. Thank you. Um, Pastor Curtis, I appreciate you. Love you, bro. Appreciate you, First Lady. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not to your own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge who? Yeah, yeah. And he will what? Yeah. Yeah. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own yeah. understanding. Yeah. But what if I don't know you, God? Wow. You sat in that chair and didn't even know if the legs were right, but you still sat in it, right? That's it. Wow. You smoked that J and had no idea if it was laced or not, but you still smoked it, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. You put the bottle to your mouth, had no idea what was in it, but you still drunk it, right? Right. Mm -hmm. You laid with Shardy and didn't know what she had, who she was about, right. but you did to do, right? Yep. <laughs> So trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge you, and he will direct your path. Yeah. Born and raised Washington, D.C., my mother said, the hell with D.C., let's move to Landover Hills. Wow. That's the old man. Little did she know. She ain't know no better. My father rode out on me when I was about, I left D.C. when I was about 10 or 11, so he rode up probably when I was about 5. Hit the hole, you know, I'm gonna come pick you up, sat outside the apartment, waiting, never showed up. I wanted to hate my father. Yeah. But I wanted to love him also. Yeah. I was a menace to my mother because I wanted to love my father who wasn't there. So I took it out of her. I resented my father for not being there. But I resented my mother for my father not being there. Mm -hmm. Bible says, in all thy getting, get understanding. Fast forward, I'm 43 yeah. with three daughters. Three daughters. And I'm struggling trying to figure out how to properly father my daughters. 14, 10, and 4. Me and my wife, and as a father, I'm struggling trying to understand how to properly raise my daughter because I'm still learning how to be a father. Mm -hmm. So me and my 14-year-old bump heads like crazy because she in that whole 14-year-old stage. Yeah. Me and my 10-year-old, we just laugh and joke. Me and the 4-year-old, that's my heart because I can't do no wrong to her. Mm -hmm. And all thy getting... Get understanding. Sometimes you have to lose something to fully understand and appreciate some things, right? Yeah. It wasn't until I got older and battling between trying to love my father and hate my father, trying to love my mother and resent my mother, that I really understand what exactly was going on because neither one of my parents had parents in their life that they fully trusted or they fully understood or fully knew how to raise them. Mm 